Hello, everyone. Welcome to our service of morning prayer for Sunday, July 4th, 2021. It is the sixth Sunday after Pentecost. And today, our service takes the format found in the Order of Divine Service of the Canadian Forces. And it is uh, with the date 1950. Well, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to Almighty God. Most holy and merciful Father, we acknowledge and confess in thy presence our sinful nature prone to evil and slothful in good, and all our shortcomings and offenses against thee. Thou alone knowest how often we have sinned, in wandering from thy ways, in wasting thy gifts, in forgetting thy love. But thou, O Lord, have pity upon us, who are ashamed and sorry for all wherein we have displeased thee. Teach us to hate our errors, cleanse us from our secret faults, and forgive our sins, for the sake of thy dear Son, our Savior. And, O most holy and loving Father, send thy purifying grace into our hearts. We beseech thee that we may henceforth live in thy light and walk in thy ways, according to the commandments of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our first reading comes from the second book of Samuel, chapter 5, verses 1 to 5, and 9 and 10. Then all the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and spoke, saying, Indeed, we are your bone and your flesh. Also, in times past, when Saul was king over us, you were the one who led Israel out and brought them in. And the Lord said to you, You shall shepherd my people Israel, and be ruler over Israel. Therefore all the elders of Israel came to the king at Hebron, and King David made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord. And they anointed David king over Israel. David was thirty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned forty years. In Hebron he reigned over Judah seven years and six months. And in Jerusalem, he reigned 33 years over all Israel and Judah. Then David dwelt in the stronghold and called it the city of David. And David built all around from Milo and inward. So David went on and became great. And the Lord God of hosts was with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 48. Great is the Lord and, and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in his holy mountain. Beauty in elevation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north. 
the city of the great king. God is in her palaces. He is known as her refuge. For behold, the kings assembled, they passed by together. They saw it, and they were marveled. They were troubled, they hastened away. Fear took hold of them there, and pain as of a woman in birth pains. As when you break the ships of Tarshish with an east wind. As we have heard, so we have seen in the city of the Lord of hosts. In the city of our God, God will establish it forever. We have brought, O oh God, we have thought, O oh God, on your loving kindness in the midst of your temple. According to your name, O oh God, so is your praise to the ends of the earth. Your right hand is full of righteousness. Let Mount Zion rejoice. Let the daughters of Judah be glad because of your judgments. Walk about Zion and go all around her. Count her towers. Mark well her bulwarks. Consider her palaces, that you may tell it to the generations who follow. For this is God, our God, forever and ever. He will be our guide even unto death. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our New Testament reading for today comes from St. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 12, verses 2 to 10. St. Paul writes, I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body I do not know, or whether out of the body I do not know, but God knows, such as one was caught up in the third heaven. And I know such a man, whether in the body or out of the body I do not know, God knows, how he was caught up in, into paradise and heard inexpressible words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such a one I will boast, yet of myself I will not boast, except in my infirmities. Though I might desire to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will speak the truth. But I refrain, lest anyone should think of me above what he sees me to be, or hears from me. And lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a throne, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I plead with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly I will rather boast in my infirmities than the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading for today is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, verses 1 to 13. Then he went out from there and came to his own country, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many, hearing him, were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things? And what wisdom is this which is given to him, that such mighty works are performed by his hands? Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, Joses, Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? So they were offended at him. And Jesus said to them, 
A prophet is not without honor except in his own country, among his own relatives, and in his own house. Now he could do not he could do no mighty work there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. And he went about the villages in a circuit, teaching. And he called the twelve to himself and began to send them out two by two, and gave them power over unclean spirits. He commanded them to take nothing for the journey except a staff, no bag, no bread, no copper in their money belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. Also he said to them, in whatever place you enter a house, stay there till you depart from that place. And whoever will not receive you nor hear you, when you depart from there, shake off the dust under your feet as a testimony against them. Assuredly, I say to you, it will be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. So they went out and preached that people should repent. And they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and healed them. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Now let us say the Apostles' Creed as an aff affirmation of our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified dead, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And so, friends, today from this gospel, the gospel of Mark, we hear these words. A prophet is not without honor except in his own country, among his own relatives, and in his own house. In other words, we might think we are something special. We're all that and more out there in the world. But in our own homes, we're just one of the folks. Jesus taught and, and performed many signs and wonders throughout Judea. And we know that. We, you know, we, we know that, that uh, there, were, there were unbelievable uh, things taught and, and things done uh, by Jesus in God's name. When he returned to to his home in, in Nazareth, and the, rece the reception was not exactly that of a returning hero. It's never easy to go home and accept that friends and family will receive us as others might do. They, you know, as I say to many people, you know, I may be the rector of a parish, but uh, to my family, I'm Tommy. I learned this very clearly every time I go home to visit my dad in Bermuda and the rest of my family. Last time I was there, I was invited to preach and conduct this, the Sunday morning services at Christ Church in the parish of Devonshire. And, and that's where uh, I would say the bulk of my, uh, of my uh, teenage years was, was spent. When that first service was over and I was greeting the folks leaving the church, 
one of the ladies of the church, I'll call her Mrs. D, said, uh, and she and my mom were great friends. She said to me, that was good. Your mommy would be very proud. Keep it up, and you'll be just as good as your daddy one day. Now, I have to admit, that took me by surprise. I don't know what I was expecting, but I think my eventual response went something like this. Thank you, Mrs. D. Thank you for listening, and I hope you got something out of my sermon to sustain you through, uh, through the rest of the week. Now, Mrs. D's response surprised me even more. Absolutely, she said, because we bought you upright. To us, you're just Tommy. Now, personally, after thinking about that exchange after the fact, I've come to realize that even in her backhanded way, Mrs. D was saying that she and the church was supportive and encouraging of the call to Christ's ministry and that she and they all feel a part of contributing to that ministry. There are similar stories that I can probably tell of my experiences in both Bermuda and in New Brunswick, but I'm pretty sure that Mrs. D was sending me a message that I should not get too big for my britches. That said, in the same way, she was also reminding me that it is not my ministry, but Christ's ministry that I'm involved in. That I am not alone in this enterprise, and that I carry the hopes and dreams of all of them with me. Jesus reminds us that what of what folk are prone to say and think when we venture back home. Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? On this sixth Sunday after Pentecost, July 4th, 2021, the Gospel of Mark tells us that even with the familiarity of kinship and often disbelief, the folks of Nazareth in, in Galilee were still amazed and astonished by Jesus' teachings and his example. Some might see this story as quite negative, but I think that the fact that they were still amazed and astonished gives hope to all ministers, no matter who they are, where they come from, and where they might venture. I believe that as people of faith, even with all the distractions and information we have about the world and the folks around us, we need to be intentionally amazed and astonished. Intentionally amazed and astonished at what God has done for us and continues to do for us and uh, the whole world each and every day. We must remember that God uses us, God uses the people around us, and God uses all creation to show the depth and height and breadth of his love and grace for us and for all creation. Matthew, Mark, and Luke each provide slightly different perspectives on Jesus' encounter with friends and family at Galilee. That said, each of those passages has a similar message. God's love for all the world is made known in the life, death, resurrection, and example of Jesus Christ. Wherever he went, Jesus taught with divine wisdom and amazement. We know However, that when he visited his own hometown, the baggage of familiarity got in the way of his message. That said, 
Jesus commissioned his disciples to go out and to preach and to teach and to live his message to everyone they, they met. He did not give up or walk away. He knew that the message was far more important than the individual personalities, even his own. Jesus calls us to be God's messengers of peace and love and grace, no matter who we are, where we go, or whatever circumstances we might encounter along the way. Inevitably, there will be folks who, even seeing the divine at work in us and through us, will hasten to point us back to our own humble roots, to make sure we do not get too big for our britches. And, and folks, I think that's okay, because it is Christ's mission and ministry that we are about, and not our own. One thing I would hasten to point out is that Jesus didn't go about go doing miracles for people against their will. He knew, and I hope we know, that it is faith that makes us righteous, makes us right with God. It is faith that keeps us from being self-centered and all about ourselves. And it is faith that helps us to see the love of God around us, day in and day out. It is through the acceptance of Jesus Christ in our hearts and in our lives that we are able to unleash the power of God's holy and life-giving Spirit in things that we do and in the encounters we have with one another. Jesus sent out his disciples in pairs so that they would support and encourage one another and to hold one another accountable as witnesses of the truth of Jesus Christ in our lives. We may not realize it, but when our lives are examples of repentance, salvation, love, and mercy, we too have the power to exercise demons to heal relationships which have been broken. Christ's power and authority goes with those he sends out, with the specific intention to do God's work in the world. Today, as we hear Christ's message through the scriptures, my question for all of us is this. Are we truly living lives that are worthy of the Savior? Are we truly living our best selves in the name of our Creator God? In answer to such a question, let us first be amazed and astonished by what God continues to do for us each and every day, both at home and abroad, in spite of our distractions. Let us remember not to give up even in the face of our own baggage, our own weaknesses, and our own familiarities. Let us always remember that in doing and being Christ's messengers in the world, we are also fellow builders of God's everlasting kingdom in our world and for all eternity. Like Christ, we are not to force our message on those who are unwilling or unable to hear Christ's voice, but to live lives of Christ-like example, that they may see our good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. Finally, friends, St. Mark reminds us that even when we feel inadequate or ill-equipped, it is Jesus and not we ourselves who sends us out to do God's will. When we trust in God's unfolding story, God will lead us and God will provide. When we live out our best selves as true messengers of Christ Jesus, all will be well. All will be well. Amen. And now to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, be all praise, honor, dominion, and glory on this day and forevermore. Amen.
So today, let us remember those places around the world that are having hardship, both natural disaster and man-made war and pestilence. Let us remember all of those are brothers around the world who, are, who have to conceal or fight for their faith in order to survive. Let us remember our friends and, and brothers and sisters and neighbors across this country who are experiencing um, severe drought, severe uh, forest fires and wildfires, and those who are, who are uh, suffering uh, from the torrents of rain and and those who are being swept down uh, the mountains as they uh, as the uh, the ice uh, is uh, is is uh, melting above them. O God, the protector of all that tr trust in Thee, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Increase and multiply upon us Thy mercy, that Thou, being our ruler and our guide we may so pass through things temporal that we finally lose not the things eternal. Grant this, O Heavenly Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our Lord. Amen. Soul of Christ, sanctify us. Body of Christ, save us. Blood of Christ, refresh us. Water from the side of Christ, wash us. Passion of Christ, strengthen us. O God, O good Jesus, hear us. Within thy wounds, hide us. Suffer us not to be separated from you. From the malicious enemy, defend us. In the hour of our death, call upon us. And bid us come to you that with your saints we may praise thee forever and ever. Amen. O Lord our, our Christ, may we have thy mind and thy spirit. Make us instruments of thy peace. Where there is hatred, let us now sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Lord, we pray thee that thy grace may always be before us and make us continually to be given to all good works. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our God, the author and giver of all good things, we thank you for all thy mercies. We bless thee for the gifts of life, for thy protection around about, for thy guiding hand upon us, and for the tokens of thy love within us. We thank thee for friendship and duty, for good hopes and precious memories, for the joys that cheer us, and the trials that teach us to trust in thee. Most of all, we thank thee for the saving knowledge of thy Son, our Savior, for the living presence of, his, of thy Spirit, the Comforter, for thy Church, the Body of Christ, for the ministry of word and sacrament, and all the means of grace. In all these things, O Heavenly Father, make us wise upon a right use of thy benefits, that we may render an acceptable thanksgiving unto thee all the days of our life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who didst lead our fathers into the, our, our, our forebearers into this land, and set thy feet in a large room. Give thy grace, we beseech thee, 
to us your children, that we may approve ourselves a people mindful of thy favor and glad to do your will. Bless this nation of Canada with honorable industry, sound learning, and pure manners. Save us from lawlessness and discord, pride and arrogance, and fashion into one godly people the multitude brought together of many kindreds and tongues. Give to all the spirit of service, love, and mutual forbearance. In prosperity, make us thankful unto you, and in the day of trouble, suffer not our trust in thee to fail, so that loving thee above all things, we may fulfill thy gracious purpose in this land of Canada. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so, friends, as we bring this short time of worship and celebration to a close, let us remember all of those across this country who suffer, who suffer from sickness, who suffer from mistreatment, who suffer from mis disenfranchisement, who suffer from prejudice and hurt. Let us remember all our brothers and sisters, no matter where we find them, who are in need of God's healing hand today. And today, as, un, as unworthy as we are, let us remember those who have asked us to pray for them. We pray for Steve and Jane, for Danny and Ann, for Harry and Paul, for Lawrence and Julie, for Eunice, for Terry, for Jenny, for Ethel and Tom, for Everett, for Jesse, for John and Dawn, for Peggy and Blake, for Shirley, for Joyce, for Louise, for Mary, for Donnie, for Joyce, for Neil, for Wade, for Audrey, for Lynette, for Carol, for Megan. We pray for Clifford and Michael for Libby, for Cindy, for Dana, for Danielle, for Helen, for Lois, for David, for Carol, for Alice, and for anyone else known to us and, or unknown who are in need of God's healing hand today. Almighty and everlasting God, in whom we live and move and have our being, who has created us for thyself, so that we can find rest only in thee, grant unto us such purity of heart and strength of purpose, that no selfish passion may hinder us from knowing your will, no weakness from doing it, but in thy light may we see light clearly and in thy service find perfect freedom. For Jesus Christ, his sake. Amen. Almighty God, who has knit together thine elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, grant us grace so to follow thy blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living that we may come to thy unspeakable joys, which thou hast prepared for, the, for them that unfeignedly love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, as we bring this short time of worship and celebration to a close, May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May the Lord lift up the light of his everlasting countenance 
and give us peace from this day forward and forevermore. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.